guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to The Casual Puzzler to a very exciting video. This is all about the 54,000 Ultimate Challenge that I was a part of during the International Jigsaw Puzzle Convention. I just got back and wanted to film this video right away just because everything is fresh in my mind. I actually did take notes. I'm somewhat organized with this video because it was a long four days and I had a blast and had so much fun. There will be another video talking about the convention itself, the things that I like, the things that were challenges and kinks that happened during the convention. But in general, I really enjoyed myself and I really loved being a part of the Ultimate Challenge. I'll talk you through our strategies, how it went, um, things I learned. I do have, I think, six, seven or eight things that I learned that I will put towards the end. And I'll try to create timestamps so you can like jump ahead if you want to because I'm sure it's going to be a lengthy video. Now I didn't vlog for this video, but I did take some clips and updates while I was there. I originally planned for my husband Dave to be with me, but he actually is away in Washington for a while, so I didn't get to have him film. So I did my best while I was there, but I was kind of just enjoying the moment. But I do have some footage of when I was there. So the puzzle was the 54,000 piece Travel Around Art Puzzle by Graphica, and it is massive. It's in 27 sections, and each section is 2,000 pieces, equaling the 54,000. It did arrive in a suitcase. Um, I didn't get a clip of what it looked like all as like one big section of pieces, but they were broken up into sealable bags with 2,000 pieces in them each. I'm going to be going over each day and what happened, strategies, what came about, what we ended up with, and so let's just get into this I feel like I'm very rambly um, so I'm sorry there's just like a lot of information and a lot of stuff I'm trying to remember so I think it'll just be a good one just so you guys can know my experience about the 54,000 piece ultimate challenge so let's just get into it I actually arrived on Thursday. The convention itself started on Friday, but quite a few of us were able to join up on Thursday to have an initial planning meeting. Now we have already been talking with each other on Facebook. We had a little Facebook group going just to introduce ourselves, um, kind of get a kind of grasp of what we were expecting, where we needed to be. So on Thursday, I did end up going to the meeting pretty much straight when I got into Las Vegas. I did drive, which was nice. Um, so I ended up getting there right about that time went straight to the meeting it was nice that we were able to be in the convention hall before everyone else so we can kind of get a grasp of like the lay of the land and just so we could kind of get some ground rules or expectations rules that the convention itself was giving us so in total we had 34 hours to complete the 54,000 piece challenge which looking back now I can understand like that was a huge undertaking at first I was like ah this will be easy each of us does like a 2,000 piece section and that'll be no problem um and it was definitely a challenge. So the rules were that we had to be clocked in when we were sitting there actively puzzling because we wanted to know the exact time that it was taking us. So we would clock in and then if ever we were to leave for like the restroom or go shopping or look at the other vendors or whichever, we did have to clock out and they would just keep track of each of us so we each had our own page almost like a timesheet just to know which areas of the puzzles that we were working on and the time total that we were taking so anyone could have joined us um, we just needed to make sure that they had signed in so that way we could keep account of how many hours that it was taking us. Now it was not a Guinness World Record that we were trying to do even though we were doing the 54,000 piece puzzle um, which is the largest puzzle in the world and we were trying to beat like our own world record but the issue is that Guinness has very strict rules and they need to know the exact amount of people that were going to be a part of this puzzle challenge and since we really didn't know we didn't have the ability to do a Guinness World Record, which I'm fine with. I actually was just there to have fun and puzzles. Some general ground rules that we also created was one, no food or beverages on the tables. We didn't want to ruin the integrity. We also just wanted to make sure that we were just very aware of falling pieces, as pieces being like on our bodies, like just checking ourselves before we like exit the puzzle area. Um, in general, there weren't too many rules other than that. We just need to make sure people are clocking in and out, just be respectful and 
We did have little signs that we would use on our table. So if we were working on a section and we didn't want someone to disturb it, we had little signs that would say like, please don't touch. We, there was also one for like quiet time. Uh, there was a couple that was like join me or help me. So if you were struggling with a puzzle, if you just didn't mind if people joined you, there are signs like that as well. So moving on to day one where we were actually able to puzzle, we got there at 8 a.m. So we had 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday to be there and then it needed to be completed by 1230 on Sunday and so it really if you look back it wasn't a lot of time that we had but it seemed like a lot of time at the beginning so I got there right at 8 a.m. same with I would say like 12 of us got there straight early um to just like jump in and we all kind of took our own sections either by ourselves like I was by myself or there was some people who came with another person so there's like two a few couples doing puzzles together so we all kind of took our own sections and I ended up starting on section number 26 which was a bookcase. Um, I chose one because I'm not really good at fine art puzzles and I know some people are um, so I was just playing to my strengths because I'm really good at doing like bookcases and I in general I <laughs> just like the image. I like the little cat that was in there. It looked very doable for me so I ended up choosing number 26. Now we did appoint a couple leaders just because it was just easier for us to just make sure there was a, the right accountability, just someone to oversee like what areas need to happen. Um, they also checked in on any new people and kind of gave them the ground rules right there. So it was nice that we had a few people who wanted to take that leadership role. I just like went in straight in puzzling um, and I ended up being right in the very front of the group. So there was 27 tables with 2000 pieces each. I was right in the front because if we were to flip the puzzle around, I was straight at the bottom, which I kind of love hated that location. One, I was able to listen to all of the presenters, which is really cool. Um, but two, anytime someone was interested in the puzzle or just wanted to look, it, I would often be distracted. Um, and I was trying to be friendly and I love that I was able to meet all the, the subscribers that came up to say hi. Um, and I really did enjoy it but it also was kind of just like every I would say every 10 to 15 minutes someone new would come by and be like what are you guys doing um there's also several people who came up and like wanted to just like jump in and put in a piece which I don't think was very nice so I did have like one of those like please don't touch signs not for the other puzzlers but more for the people who were just like, walking up and like wanting to just put in pieces right off the bat so we did just have to direct them to the sign-in station. Some people did and signed up. Some people were just like, oh, no, never mind. Um, so I think if we were, maybe there was a sign that was like, hey, come join us, but you have to put in your times. I think we would have had more people join, um, but we did need to just like track the hours. Now the piece quality of the Graphica puzzles are really nice. They're super nice and matte. They're pretty thick, um, decent sized pieces. My two issues with the brand is one, or at least the experience is one that the the coloring was way darker than what you saw on the images that they gave you. Um, so for, I don't know if I have an image or clip of this, but it was like the image would be like super bright and bold. And some of the images didn't have the same detail as others. So I think there was one that was a part of the puzzle itself. And then they must have created like I don't know, copies of something because th there would be one image on each table that was like the actual image and then there'd be like two other copies that didn't have the same amount of detail. But in general, the coloring was way off than what you saw as the puzzle. So that was pretty tricky because especially when it came to the frames, like when you looked at the pictures of the frames, they were like super bright and gold. But when you looked at them at the as a puzzle piece, they're more like an orange and like a tan like it didn't quite match up so that was really difficult especially when I was doing the bookcases there was a lot of dark brown and in the image it looks a lot brighter but in person it was really really dark almost black brown so that was definitely tricky um, and then the second issue that we did discover especially later on was there were a lot of false fits which was really difficult when you had large sections of similarities so that was two issues that I noticed about the brand, at least the puzzles that we were doing. And I feel like those are kind of big when you're doing such a large puzzle. You don't really want to have any type of issues like that because I think that that did slow us down a little bit. So um, I just wanted to mention that about the pieces. But in general, the, it, they felt really nice. Um, in 
At the end of day one, I did end up finishing, I would say about 70% of my puzzle, and I spent 10 hours and 15 minutes on day one working on my section, which I think I did pretty well day one. Um, when you, I looked at other, when I looked at other people, I feel like there, there was a couple that were at the same level that I was. There were some that were barely touched because they either started late or there weren't many people who worked on it or maybe it was abandoned halfway through. So I feel like by the end of day one, we weren't as far along as we had hoped. Um, I think uh, one, we were all just like really excited to be at the convention. So a lot of us would have taken time to just walk around and shop. Um, There's also a competition that happened that day. So most of them ended up going to the competition. I did not do singles that day. So I was like one of like four people who were left behind to work on the puzzle. So I do have some, I think, updates and such. I'm not sure when I'm going to put it. So if I have any updates from day one, I will just put them here so you guys can see my experience that day. Good morning. I am walking to breakfast and then over to the convention center. So it's going to be a super fun day. I'm so excited to get started. Um, we get to go into the convention early at 8 a.m. So that's my goal. Just gonna grab something to eat for breakfast and then go. In case you're nosy of what I'm eating, I have some hard-boiled eggs, lots of fruit, and a thing of Nutella, so I'm excited. So it's around 4 o'clock. I'm having a lunch. I'm starving. I'm just having a sandwich with some chips, and I'll show you the progress in a second. I just need to get up for a second. I'm so annoyed with myself because I forgot to empty out my memory card, and it got full really quickly. So I can't do as much for like overhead footage or anything, but yeah, I'm having lunch, and it's been fun so far. I feel like I'm at least holding my own. You know, I was worried that people would be like doing huge sections a lot faster than I am, but I feel like I'm doing pretty good, so that makes me happy. So sorry for the lighting and the AC is on, but I just got back to my room. It was a really fun day. I ended up clocking out at seven and I don't think I'm gonna go back just cause my back was starting to really hurt. But I feel like I did pretty well. Um, when I, I'm trying not to compare myself cause it's supposed to be a fun experience, but I just didn't want to be the person who was, I don't know, lagging. But I definitely feel like I'm doing pretty well. So that was nice. Um, I feel like each table has their own method. Some people just did the frame. Some people are just going all in. Uh, I was kind of just doing it by like color sorting. So it was a lot of fun. So it's 7.30 now. I am waiting for my dinner to be done. And I have some iced tea. I'm hot and thirsty. I did not drink enough water today. Um... So, my plans this evening, I did get invited to go to drinks, which I might do. Um, it's just one other girl who is super nice. We hit it off, so I'm excited. I'm having a blast. It's so much fun. I feel like I haven't had like a dedicated weekend, a puzzle weekend in a long time. So, it's just been a good time. So, I think tomorrow I will finish my section and then move on to something else. So, that's my plan. I'll probably My goal is to be done with my section by like 2, and then I can... Moving on to day two, my initial goal was to finish my first 2000 piece section, which I felt like was very doable. I pretty much had like a little bit of the the bright colors left and then I had a lot of brown left. Um, so I thought I would be able to finish it right. I was hoping by like 2 p.m. my section would be completed. I feel like a few others would have also been completed at that same time. However, I did end up being a part of pairs, which I was not originally signed up for, but I did have a partner. So I did take about an hour and a half to two hours outside the ultimate challenge to do that competition. So when I came back, I hadn't put a sign up that was like, do not touch. So I ended up coming back and someone was working on that brown section and I was like, perfect. I think there was two people that were working on it. So I really didn't worry about that section. Didn't want to do the dark brown anyway. So I ended up joining a couple people at table 20. So there's two other ladies I had met during the comp the convention and so we ended up pairing together and working on table 20 which at the start of us working on it only the artwork was done there was still like the gold frames all the white there was a whole section at the bottom that still needed to be worked on I, I feel like as a team we did really well at finishing that one up um, we all kind of took our own sections I would take a frame, there was Julie who also took a frame, and then Elizabeth had done like the whole bottom section or start to do the bottom section. Um, and it was really cool to work as a group. 
Um, I feel like we all had our different strategies and tips and tricks and I think we did pretty well. Um, it was interesting because me and Julie were both working on a different frame and I was kind of a bit stuck and she was kind of stuck and so we ended up switching spots and instantly we were just like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. So I think just having like a different perspective um, and just like having a fresh set of puzzle pieces to work in and it really helped us because I feel like we both were like on a roll after we switched sections. So I don't know about those frames in particular, but it's funny that each of us were stuck and then we switched and then both of us were like, oh, this frame is so much better. So that ended up working out. And then they, we finally got our first take on the white pieces. Um, the amount of white is a lot in this puzzle. Um, and especially like puzzles, the white in the frames and the dark brown of the bookcases would definitely be our demise going forward because I feel like a lot of puzzles at this point had those elements that needed to be done or there was some, a couple of like really intricate hard fine art puzzles that needed to be done. But I feel like by the end of day two it was starting to get really exciting. Um, I think at the end of day two we ended up having six set whole sections completed which out of 27 not the best uh, percentage but it was really fun whenever a puzzle section was completed because it would just be like this huge uproar of like yeah we were closer yes <laughs> Also, what was a funny moment, um, we were all kind of getting a little groggy, a little, I would say like strange, like some of the, if you, I'm not gonna put in the audios of some of the times when we were puzzling because the conversation just takes weird turns and you just like get a little quirky and you can tell that we were like getting tired and also getting to know each other or a lot more comfortable like having conversation. And it was funny because at one point, um, there was another section of the convention which was for metaverse or something like that and they had brought us energy drinks and <laughs> I feel like after the energy drinks came that's when things got a little crazy um, I did it staying until 8 p.m. that night I think we were I would say 70% done with the full puzzle at that point and we only had four and a half hours on Sunday to complete it so I think a lot of us knew we weren't going to complete it at this point but we were all just having fun it was just really great to know all these new puzzlers and I feel like I've made so many different friends and connections so that was really cool um but yeah day two we can tell that we were we were not quite where we needed to be but we were having a really great time it is two o'clock and I'm almost done with my section but it's a lot of brown see how long that gets me but I definitely have high hopes but finishing my section today and then I'll partner with someone else on another piece. So I've been having a lot of fun. I feel like I'm just living my best life right now. I'm sorry if I'm not filming a ton, but I'm enjoying this weekend a lot. I feel like some people are really far along, close to like where I'm at, and then other tables either got delayed or started late or they were in competitions and they just like didn't get back to it right away. So we'll see how it goes. Moving on to day three, so this is Sunday. We only had four and a half hours to complete the challenge. And what was really frustrating is that we all got there pretty much straight at 8 a.m. I have a picture of us. That was only half the group that showed up, the another half showed probably in like a few minutes of that picture being taken of us waiting outside because the, they had locked the door, even though they all knew, like, or at least the security knew that we were going to be there early we were locked out at 8 a.m. Um, and so we ended up waiting about a half hour to get into the convention hall, which was kind of annoying because um, we didn't have a lot of time to begin with and we were all just ready and eager to go. Um, and then around 8.30, 8.40 was when we were finally able to walk into the convention hall to start puzzling. Me and another puzzler, Elizabeth, ended up starting on number 25, which pretty much just had all white left to go. And I feel like a lot of the puzzles at that point had either a lot of white, a lot of frames, a lot of brown shelves, or there was like maybe like one or two that still had the artwork to do. Um, so that those sections were really tricky and I feel like this is also when we really discovered how many false fits there were um, but we all kind of just had our own little quirks and strategies that we would come up with or share so that way we could just have the best chances. Um, one thing that we noticed or I noticed was that 
there was somewhat longer pieces and somewhat shorter pieces and the longer pieces went horizontal the shorter pieces went vertical um, and I shared that with a couple of tables and they're like oh my gosh that's such a good idea because there was so much of a similar color that it was hard to do those sections. It ended up taking, I think, two hours for us to complete table number 25. Um, at that point, there was another upper because we finished a table and then we split up. I ended up going to number 14 to join Laura and there was so much more white at that table. She probably had one of the larger puzzles for white pieces, at least that I saw. Um, and there was a ton of them. Uh, she definitely has more patience than I did. So together we were doing okay. I was definitely saying my patience was wearing a little thin with the amount of white pieces because I pretty much had, hadn't worked with any puzzle piece that had anything else besides just plain white on it. Um, there was a little bit of a color difference, like a smidge of color difference. Like there were some somewhat yellow pieces, there was somewhat gray, then we had like our super whites that we would call them that were at like the top of the puzzle. Um, so there are very slight variations, but the, the lighting wasn't the best. So you really had to like look at certain angles and you might be able to see one. Um, but it was pretty tricky. Uh, at, I think around the 11 o'clock mark, we got one other person to join us and together we did finish section number 14. What was another really good strategy is that um, Laura would be working on one corner, but we all kind of needed those pieces because they're all just like plain white. So she would use her piece in her section, pass it to me, I would look at, for it in my section, and then I'd pass it to the next person, and they would like try to match it in their section. And that strategy definitely helped us. It was made things go way faster because she would quickly do it, I would quickly do it, he would like find the piece. And that was just, that was awesome. That was such a good strategy. Um, and we did end up finishing it around 12 because I think it was around 12 when we did finish our section. And we all knew at this point we weren't going to finish the challenge. Um, we were do trying our best though. We were just seeing how much of it we could do. Um, so I ended up splitting off and go joining a puzzle team that was doing, I forget what table it was, it was one of the bookshelves with the brown and I, those brown sections were so hard. I think the whole time I was there for the, that, like 30 minutes, I may have gotten like four pieces in because they were so dark and there was like really, it was really hard to tell any type of texture. Well, it's over. We did not complete it, but we, I'll have to count how many sections we had completely done. The leftover sections were either brown from the shelves, white or frames, so. We did a really good effort, um, and they are giving us a bunch of free puzzles, which I'm excited about. That's probably what I would have used my money for anyway. So um, yeah, I still had a good time, and now we're off to do teams, which I am going to be competing in. So I'm excited. So 12.30 came around. We did not finish. I feel like of the sections that were remaining, there were some that were really, really close. There were some that were quite far away, but I do feel like if we had until the rest of the day, we would have been able to complete it because at that point, there was just larger groups working on the puzzles. Um, Cause, and I think it's funny looking back because we all started like working on our own section, like no one touched my puzzle. And then towards the end, there's like groups of five or six or seven. that are just like all combined together, just having a blast. And it was almost like, like adult summer camp for puzzle lovers and it was really fun to meet everybody. Um, so we did not finish. I do have some images of all the sections at that point. We didn't end up putting them all together because they would have just had to take it apart. We didn't want to have any type of issues with separating the pieces afterwards. So we just left them individually and it was just, they. I will say the puzzles that were completed or the sections that were completed were stunning to look at. They're nice and pretty. They're beautiful. If you are a fine arts lover, this brand is lovely. Um, and I, hopefully in a smaller piece count, you don't see as much issue with the fit or the false fits that happened. So in general, in total, I had spent 23 hours and 50 minutes on the puzzle challenge. They originally had a prize, which I didn't even know about until I got there. I had signed up so far in advance, like a year ago, that a prize wasn't even a thing that I knew about. Um, so there was a $20,000 prize if we had completed 
the puzzle and we would have split the winnings between all of us. We did not win, but they just really loved our effort. So they did give us free puzzles based on how many hours that you worked on the puzzle. So that was honestly, I was just probably gonna use the prize money for new puzzles anyways. So I was just decided to get new puzzles. I was just happy to be there. It was super fun. Now I did some math to see if it was even plausible for us to have finished the puzzle. And looking back, it, it could have been done. Um, I think a few things could have happened is one, we could have not done the other competitions because during those times, there's not many people working on the puzzle, um, especially during singles. I noticed there was like maybe four of us that was doing the puzzle. Um, during pairs, I'm not quite sure, but I think most of us were doing the pairs competition. And so I think if we were on that we and we had more time in the puzzle section, we may have been able to get a lot further. Um, I also think that there was a lot of times where people were just chatty and just getting to know each other, which is totally fine. Um, I also think we could have done better about working to each other's strengths because I'm someone who does not do fine art so I pretty much stayed away from those fine art sections and then we had people who are like brand new to puzzling doing like the hardest section of the puzzle so I think we should have I don't know planned a little bit better to like know what each other is good at and that way we could have done those sections that we were really good at. I know there was a couple people like one person was really good at sky so she was pretty much doing a lot of the sky for people. There was another person who was really good at frames so he was doing a lot of frames like they would finish the artwork and he would just do the frame afterwards so that was really helpful um i don't know what section i could have <laughs> been a part of because i'm really not a fine arts person but i was really good at doing any type of like filigree work or like large sections i guess of similar colors i i guess that was my strength um because i did end up doing a lot better than i was expecting to now I just wanted to end this video as like just a fun little things that I learned type thing on during this challenge. So some of them are just things related to me, some of things are strategies and such that I've discovered or just it reiterated now that I was in this type of uh, environment. But the first one, which sounds kind of cheesy, um, but it is, it's really easy to make friends when you have like interests. Um, I have some friends, but none of them are really into puzzles, and it was just interesting to see how fast I can make friends when you have a, a similar hobby. I mean, it's very easy to strike up a conversation. It's interesting to see other people who have the same amount of enthusiasm with that hobby, because I mean, I have some friends who are like, oh yeah, I like puzzles, but they do like maybe one every few months. Um, but I just loved learning from each other, and it was just really easy to connect, and I'm excited to to maybe join a couple groups that are here in my area because then I can just like meet new people in my area and we all have the same hobby which I think is just a really nice discovery in this puzzle challenge. And the second thing I learned is when working with large sections of one color it's good to be one organized two find similarities or patterns and three you have to work together um you can't be someone who just like steals all the pieces it was very helpful for us to like find strategies or find patterns especially like the long ways and short ways that i discussed um and just sharing that information with others and let them know what you've discovered because that was definitely helpful um also just again working together was helpful and being organized was definitely helpful because if you didn't know which puzzle pieces you did versus the ones that you didn't it could just take you forever and I noticed the ones that had them like kind of organized like in a grid did were a lot faster than those who just like craziness. The third thing that I learned which I'm surprised that I learned there was that I'm much more comfortable with larger piece puzzles. I've always been doing like the 500 to 1000 pieces that's definitely my comfort range. I mean I can easily do a thousand piece in an afternoon but I I prefer those smaller piece counts and I've always veered off to the larger ones. Now I do own a couple 2000 piece ones because I'm like, ooh, someday I'll do those 2000 piece ones when I'm bold and brave. And I feel like now that I worked on one, the 2000 piece puzzle of the bookcase, but then also table 20 or whatever it was, um, I feel like I 
realized 2,000 pieces isn't as difficult as I was expecting. But not only will I go up to like the 2,000 piece range with no issues, but I'm also considering doing like large piece counts, like 6,000, 10,000 pieces, because it is broken up into smaller sections, and I think it's a lot more doable than I was expecting it to be. Number four, which is definitely like I already knew this, but I'm not a fine arts puzzle lover. Um, but I will say I'm more apt to do them because of the final image. Um, so I know I'm, that's not my strong suit. I'm not one who does well with brush strokes. I have done a few in the past, but it's not my favorite. But at the end of the day, when you looked at all those images at the end, they are stunning to look at. So I could see me getting a few here and there. It's definitely, again, my favorite thing, but I'm much more willing to do it. The fifth thing that I learned is that each puzzler has different strategies, quirks, likes, interests, and preferences. Um, I already knew this, but it was interesting to see it in person, especially day one, we all had our different strategies. Like I ended up grouping mine in like colors. Some people are just going straight through the bag. Some people are super, super strict with like their grid and sorting. The sixth thing that I learned is that sorting makes a huge difference, especially with the larger pieces. I do sort a little bit. I hate sorting. It's not my favorite thing. But if I was to go into a larger piece count, I would definitely consider doing a really nice detailed sort because it really did make a huge difference. You could tell the tables that did a really good sort versus the tables that didn't and it, it was just a lot faster to do a good sort. Um, and then number seven is switching the angle can easily change the perspective and get you further along because um, you're hoping to just like stick it through and like oh you'll figure this out but sometimes just switching your section or switching the person or switching the direction of the tail that you're looking at can make a huge difference and that definitely helped with me and Julie with the frames but also helped during our competitions we would just like rotate and just like have someone different in a different section um, or just in general just switch the table around or the board around or whatever you're looking at just because it can just give you a different viewpoint and you can maybe see something that you couldn't before. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will again have a separate video all about the convention itself. There are things that I like, things that I didn't, things that were quirks. I also have a, another video with just all the puzzles that I got, like the biggest haul that I've ever had on my channel. So I'll make sure to link that down below. But that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.